box could ever be swapped out. Okay, all the thread blocks have to have hardware that can execute it at the moment. Okay, any moment, all the thread blocks need to be all residing in the SM, you know, being scheduled, being uh, you know, actively uh, executing, so or, or scheduling. So you cannot have more than this many thread blocks in your uh, in your uh, GPU, and so they will be you know all uh, active, and then uh, you know you will be you know essentially using atomic operations uh, to activate to sort of deploy these threads to the work that you you generate through the thread first search process. Okay, so how does it work? Um, so, uh, when you have a breath first search using, um, using the um, uh, persistent thread blocks, you have a, uh, the, the kernel will just have a big while loop because all these thread blocks are going to be just iterating, looking for work. Okay? They'll be looking for work and then they're engaging work, and once they finish work, they, you know, they, they go back and look for work. Right. So, so that's, these thread blocks become workers, okay? workers that are tailored to do the work that you're generating each iteration of the breadth first search in this case. So with, within each uh, iteration, so that's why uh, they're going to all iterate until the frontier size is zero. Because when the frontier size is zero, you have consumed, uh, you have visited all the nodes. Right? And that's the point where first first search is done. And then all the threads will exit. Right? So during the process, you know, during the search, all these uh, you know, thread blocks will be iterating, and then they will be you know uh, they will be processing the current frontier. Okay. So uh, let us, let's assume that the, the frontier has been produced. So the first. In the first iteration, the frontier is the C node, right? Remember, we start with that C node, so that's the only one frontier node. And then you enter this while loop, so only one of the threads will be, you know, visiting that, the neighbors of the the neighbors of that single frontier node. But then the next iteration, you will generate a whole bunch of frontier nodes from the neighbors of that node, right? So then more threads will, more of the thread blocks will participate until it becomes big enough that all the thread blocks will participate, but you will not be able to fully process the frontier because the frontier is so big. That's why this needs to be a for loop, so that all the thread blocks will process part of the frontier, and then they come back and process part of the frontier, and so on, right, until they exhaust. So this allows you to process both very, very small frontiers and very, very big frontiers. It just, in each case, you have different number of thread blocks engaged in that iteration, right? So this is the key for loop that allows you to do that. And inside the for loop, you will take a section, right? The, the thread block will take a section of the uh, frontier and then have each thread to visit the neighbors and in queue uh, the, you know, the, uh, the neighbors into the queue if, if it's not previously visited, right? So this, this is that, uh, you know, uh, the generation of the frontier. And then you update the frontier size, and you do a global synchronization, and wait until everyone finishes with this frontier, right? Because uh, there are multiple thread blocks involved. You need to make sure that everyone else has done the same thing, right? And then uh, you all go to the next frontier, right? So you don't want to go into the next frontier too early. You want to make sure that everyone has finished the current frontier processing and generated, collectively generating the next big frontier, right? and then you all go to the next iteration. So that's why this needs to have a global synchronization. For GPUs, then you will be using the global atomics, you know, the atomics to, to implement this global synchronization. And um, so that, that, that's one. But for, you know, if you use collaborative method uh, pattern, you can actually do one of the two things. One is you can say, well, let's have CPU to participate, right? Have CPU to participate in each frontier process. Or you can say, well, I'm going to let CPU process the frontier until it's too 
config for CPU, and then you actually invoke the GPU. So in that case, the, you, know, you unleash all the thread blocks and the GPU to process the frontier when it's big enough. Right? So, so that's, you know, those are you know, two, at least two of the possibilities that you can have uh, with the uh, you know, CPU. Uh, GPU. So, so this is. Uh, I'm going to. You know, I'm going to uh, uh, stop at some point and then finish. You know, uh, not Thursday because on Thursday I'm traveling, but uh, next Tuesday. Okay. So uh, keep in mind that on Thursday, uh, you know, Carl is going to uh, is going to be giving feedback. So make make sure that you go and make appointment with Carl and Wei. Okay, and they will be giving feedback. So to sign up for these slots for the uh, individual teams to discuss with them. That, that's how we're going to be using Thursday time. And then on Tuesday, I'll come back and finish this lecture, and then you know, maybe one more advanced topic, and then we're done with the lectures, OK? So, so for the, uh, this piece of code is that global synchronization, OK? It's this global synchronization right here, right? So this is how, how we're going to implement the global synchronization. Um, uh, so uh, we're going to say, uh, you know, as as you ge generate uh, more of uh, more and more of the frontiers, uh, you will you know, increase the you know the, the frontier uh, number, and then uh, there's uh, you, there is a uh, kind of a uh, you know the, uh, for for the thread. For within each thread, uh, your know, thread block, there's going to be a representative thread that will go and do an atomic add to the uh, to the thread's end. So remember, when you go to the global synchronization, you are already done with your portion of the processing processing the current frontier, right? So you already finished that for loop, but the for loop is being executed by all the thread blocks. So some of the thread blocks will finish er earlier, some of the thread blocks will finish later. So each one, when they finish, they will come down to this global synchronization. And this is actually a big global barrier. Okay? So we're implementing a, a, a big global barrier. And the, so the atom, we, you do an uh, atomic add to the, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the thread's end. So this is essentially <coughs> to say, I'm done with my part of the work. So the the num the count within this variable gives you the number of thread blocks that have reported to the barrier, right? Reported to the barrier, and then uh, so then you come down. So you you go and increment it, and then you come down and say, I'm going to wait until everyone else has come come to the barrier, right? So you come down here, and then uh, you know so uh, only. Uh, you know, one of the you know, uh, if the global ID so the, this global ID is the, uh, the the real representative you know the ID and um, uh, so you would go and test whether you know um, wh whether the atomic add has reached uh, you know the, uh, reached the the, the grid team so this is the number of thread blocks that are executing right the number of thread blocks. So one of the threads is going to be checking. It, did everyone report, right? Did everyone come and report that they finished? So only one of the threads is going to do this. And remember, this is atomic app with zero. So this doesn't do anything to that count. It just keep reading the value. It just, you, you're really just using the atomic operation to keep reading that value. And then you're going to do a, uh, you know, uh, so, you, then you're going to just keep doing a uh, looping until this value has reached has reached the grid dim, right? So this is when you say, okay, everyone has reported to the barrier. I certify that everyone is there, right? And so now we can release the barrier and everyone can leave the barrier. The way to do this is by uh, you know resetting. The uh, you know the uh, the PDR threads to uh, n to zero, and uh, by doing this atomic exchange, this is also an atomic operation, and then uh, you uh, you you know you, you you do atomic add to this you know the thread thread run uh, by one, and then say okay so you know uh, I have done 
one more iteration, you know, that we're done with one more iteration of the, you know, of the, uh, the, the processing. So essentially, we, we process one entire frontier. So all the, all the nodes in the next frontier will be level n plus one now, right? So that's why we in increment, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the count. And then, so we, then we, we, we go back to the thread blocks. So the thread blocks, you know, the, you, within each thread block, if the th uh, thread ID is zero, and, the, and it's also not that, that global thread zero, then you would be doing this one waiting, right? Waiting for the, uh, you know, the, waiting for the, uh, you know, the, uh, the thread count to, 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 for everyone to finish. So when this guy releases the barrier, all the representative threads will be released, and then uh, you know all the other threads will be at the same thread, waiting for this thread. So when this thread comes about, comes down, then everyone gets released. So implementing a you know this is how you implement what we call a global barrier in a hierarchical approach, right? Every thread block has a representative thread. The do, look, looking for everyone, you know, waiting for everyone else to finish, and so so this is this part, and then there's a single representative waiting for all the thread blocks to report to the barrier. Once everyone has reported the barrier, the single rep, global representative say, okay, now we're coming out of the barrier, and then all the thread zero thread of the thread blocks and say, oh yeah, okay, we're coming out of the barrier. And then everyone else is waiting on the sync thread. As soon as that thread joins the sync thread, then everyone else can continue into the next iteration. So this is not only used for collaborative method, uh, methods. Any of the persistent you know, uh, thread block algorithms, or what we call, sometimes we, you know, some, we call the mega kernel algorithms, that keeps all the threads running and then just keeps switching between the you know, methods rather than relaunching the kernel. All these things require some level of global barrier, and this is a typical pattern of implementing that global uh, uh, barrier. Okay, so you know, now you have we have a way to make sure that all the thread blocks involved and even G CPU threads involved in processing the current frontier to complete. And then they all got released and then move on to the next frontier. So it will process the, the, the new frontier and generate you know, all the stuff, you know, the, all the, uh, the next frontier nodes, right, in, in the next while of iteration. Okay. So when we come back on Tuesday, I'll pick up from here, you know, I would kind of you know, refresh your memory a little bit. And um, you know, if you have any question, there's actually quite a few things to, to digest. So you know, the, uh, take a look at you know, the code, uh, the code and uh, slides. I already uploaded the slides, and you know, uh, watch the video again if you have quite, uh, if you want to uh, uh, really refresh your memory. And then we move on from there. Okay. So I'll see you a week from today.